Hey, it's GTC week and I'm outside the San Jose Convention Center with Mike Geyer, head of Digital Twins at NVIDIA. How's it going, Mike? Yeah, it's going quite well, Rafi. How's it going? Good, good. Some really exciting announcements um, from Jensen in the keynote, stuff like robotics and new hardware to scale uh, physical AI. Uh, what's keeping you busy right now? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Well, GTC has been keeping me busy. Uh, really excited about the keynote. A lot of fantastic things came together there. Uh, some of the stuff that I'm really excited about is the intersection of humanoids mm -hmm. and the adoption in industry. So that okay. was some of the projects that we're working on leading up to GTC. Some of our large industrial customers that you might have seen in the keynote yes. are really moving towards automation and bringing humanoids into the mix for everything that they're doing. Mm -hmm. It's really an exciting time for anybody that's in manufacturing, warehouse, logistics, large automation systems are here. So robots have been in manufacturing quite some time, right? They've quite had some a time. place in automobile manufacturing and warehouse management, right? Yep. Assembly line stuff. Absolutely. So what's different now with the recent advancements? What's what's the big change now? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Robots have been around for a long time. The way robots have operated is purely rote. So they do the same thing over and over again. Mm -hmm. So they're really just complex machines. There hasn't been a feedback loop of perception, sensing, deciding, and acting. And that's what we're seeing now is truly this advent of autonomy, where robots are no longer just doing the same thing on the same part over and over and over again. Now they're actually dynamic. They're able to learn, they're able to sense, they're able to perceive. And one of the projects that I'm really excited about, the mega blueprint that you heard Jensen talk about, yeah. is now making it so that we can test robots as a fleet. So they can work together, they can determine what they need to do to either avoid other robots, to work collaboratively with humans, to work with forklifts, automation equipment, but really bringing autonomous robots, true autonomy, into the facility at scale. Wow, that's amazing. So what do you need for Mega to work in your in your factory, in your workplace? What are the building blocks of Mega? Yeah, yeah. the first, first thing is what we talked about last time is a digital twin. So the digital twin is like the testing ground or the testing area. That's what you're going to run the scenarios in. The other thing is you need robots. You need their control stacks and their perception stacks. And you need some kind of a fleet manager or an orchestration system, like a warehouse management system or manufacturing execution system. Kind of the software that most of these companies run today that says for this given throughput, these given parameters, here's the things that need to take place out on the shop floor today. Right, right. So SCAN uh, in the UK have been integrating robotics into their enterprise clients' workflows in, Excellent. Much, in much the same way that you're describing there. Okay. Where does cloud come into this? Because yes. Cloud is, they're a cloud service provider as well. And there's a lot of talk about uh, combining their robotics uh, expertise with their cloud expertise into creating an enterprise solution that can scale and adapt to the client's requirements. So where um, do you see that coming? Yeah, in? I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. That's one of the things of the mega blueprint that's, that's really critical. It's all cloud-based, mm -hmm. and we're doing distributed cloud GPU compute. Okay. So one of the things that's really limited the adoption and the testing of multiple robots at scale mm -hmm is the compute, the perception stack, what the robot sees. Yeah. Each, each sensor on a robot is effectively its own high fidelity render stream. And that's been, real, that's been tough to do in a single computer. Mm -hmm. Now with Sensor RTX as part of the mega platform, yeah. we can put that all on the cloud. Mm -hmm. So a cloud provider like Scan is going to be can be a fantastic partner because you can start to help with some of that integration. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing about mega is, as it's a blueprint, um, any of our development partners in the ecosystem can take that, they can work with different parts of it, they can customize it, modular, modularize it, and, um, and really make it your own. So right. it's, it it's not like bespoke. a skit, yeah, it could be bespoke, you're to, right, to absolutely. Your, to your needs. Yeah. Now I remember last time we talked about um, some of the elements that go into training the systems you know, behind yeah. all of this stuff. And the stuff you're talking about now about perception on the, on the robot side of things, that feels like it's, you're talking about computer vision, right? Yeah, absolutely. So computer vision, is, camera, is LiDAR. Is the multimodal yeah. training part of that, that process? Like the, the, do you need yeah. to train it on different types of data, like images, video, motion? You know, what, what kind of a data needs that's, to go that's a That's a great question. So the training would happen uh, prior to going into, Isaac, uh, into Mega. Yeah. So the training would happen in Isaac, and Mega is where those trained policies are then tested 
to see how they interact with the others. So multimodal uh, training, definitely relevant, but that's kind of upstream from Mega. So that's more of the Isaac workflow. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mike, yeah. for your time. And if you liked uh, this kind of stuff, be sure to check out our socials and subscribe to the Scan AI Solutions YouTube channel.